Let's start with playing lines, just because I feel like that doesn't come up very often. So I remember when I was studying music at UCLA, you know, I was around the age 18, 19, 20. I remember going from a feeling that I just would never be able to play bebop lines. Like I literally thought that this was just like a magical thing that only certain people could do, which is like such an absurd conclusion to come to. But that's genuinely how I felt. My teacher kind of explained to me like at its core, it's basically just like connecting the dots. You have maybe different chord tones, and then the melodic line in a lot of ways is just like connecting between them. So for example, you know, C7, you know, and just going from one, three, five, and seven, and then back to one maybe. If these are our quote unquote dots that we're connecting, you know, you could come from below um, before each of these and go, and you can come from above. below and above, or maybe like above below. Or you can do like, and then you can do some combination like below, above, below, above. Now that doesn't mean that, you know, on the downbeats you're always landing on a chord tone. You know, I could go like, you know, And, that, and that's still fair game because it just gives it a different sound. You know, maybe it's like a slightly more unstable line because on, wait, on beat three, I was landing on D flat, right? But that's okay. A lot of things in music can be described in terms of stability and instability, which I love. Because then I could call that line a more unstable line, but I still haven't said whether it's good or bad, you know? Unstable doesn't mean good or bad. That's why I like those terms. Well, one thing that could be really unstable is non-chord tones, non-scale tones, and then even more unstable is like multiple non-scale tones at a time. Okay, you know, probably not the most stable line, but maybe, maybe it could be the right line. Like maybe, maybe you're just playing really out. Maybe. Uh, and, the, and it's unstable because you have multiple non-scale tones in a row. The other thing that ca causes instability are leaps. Going, leaping from here up, an unstable interval, but stable harmonically. Now, if you leap between two non-chord tones, that's probably going to be really unstable. So instead of... If it was like... I actually kind of like that a little bit in the end. Woo! I actually like that line, wow. But very unstable, very wacky, right? That's certainly not the most fundamental way to play that, sh that chord change, and I probably would suggest learning some other ways to do it first. So, leaping between two non-chord tones is very unstable. Playing multiple non-chord tones in a row is unstable. Knowing that, and just knowing that you generally want to connect between point A to point B, connecting the dots between two, two chord tones, when you start transcribing bebop lines, it'll, it'll kind of make more sense to you. I slow it down but yeah I'm, I'm just going from here to here to here to here to here so now I want to get practical here this is a Barry Harris exercise which shows two fundamental ideas probably more than two honestly but so this is the exercise I'm gonna play it from the top this is what it sounds like I'm gonna try and play it like while reading the screen and playing it at a 90 degree angle so I might miss a little bit but here we go yeah. Bar five here. Here's bar nine. Now, what's interesting about this exercise, it's a 20 note sequence that repeats. So those 20 notes are as follows. You go from D minor seven, to B minor seven flat five, to F major seven, and then back down to D minor seven when the sequence starts over again. And you could actually play this exercise if you inverted your B minor seven flat five so that it was just a root position B minor seven flat five. And if you inverted the F major seven so it was a root position F major seven, you could play the exercise like this. Check it out, I'll start down here. And 
And in doing so, you'd play this shape, followed by this shape, followed by this shape. Within that scale, you know, obviously if you play a, a G minor, sorry, not G minor, G dominant 13, you'll notice that, you know, you do have that D minor 7 shape from 5, 7, 9, 11. You have that F major 7 shape, which is the 7, 9, 11, and 13. And then, of course, the B half diminished, which is 3, 5, 7, 9. Now, there's, it's not just arpeggiating. There's also these other notes. Why is there an A flat, sorry, an A sharp in here? There's an A flat and an F sharp. There's an E flat and a, and a C sharp. These are called enclosures. Does anyone know what enclosures are? Like a, like a circle around something. It goes around it. It encloses it. Yeah. Those are enclosures. The, the two main ideas are, you, you know, when you play a line, you can always arpeggiate. Uh, and then number two, you can always play an enclosure around a scale tone. And then, I guess the third idea would be, when you arpeggiate, you can also invert the arpeggiation. So instead of playing this, which he plays in, in bar one the first time, you'll notice that the next time he plays that D minor 7 shape, right, it's inverted. And then the next time he plays it would be here, and it's going up. And then the next time he plays it would be here, and it's going down. And then the last time he plays it would be here and it's going down again. The line goes up and down and up and down and up and up and then down and down and down and down. It just shows that if you have a sequence, this is a 20 note sequence, you can vary the sequence in certain ways by, in this case, inverting things. And it'll sound as if there's more variation and oops, wrong button. And that's all the time we have. No, you can create more variation than you otherwise would with these 20 notes. This whole page is great. And I love this one. This one, 19, this is fantastic. Check this out. This is just... It's just all the enclosures. And so I think at that point in the exercise, what it's showing you is that if you're connecting the dot from A to B to C, but in the second sequence, you can connect the dots from B to D to F or whatever, that means, therefore, you can go from A to B and then if B can go to D, then you can go A, B, D instead of A, B, C. That, that these are almost like little box cars on a train that you can put in different orders. That's how a lot of improvisers create what seems like a much more massive vocabulary than what they actually wield. But once I had that idea in my head of like connecting the dots, enclosures, scale tones and non-scale tones and leaps and whatever, things started to make a lot more sense, you know?